Oh, yay, oh, yay, oh, yay. Very recently, the United States Supreme Court decided a very important Fourth Amendment case, and the decision has been highly anticipated and is interesting in many regards. The case, United States versus Jones, involved a lengthy investigation of a drug dealer. Part of the investigation is the agents placed a GPS tracker on the defendant's car. The tracker uh, relayed information for 28 days, relayed all the travels of the car, in essence, wherever the car had been. That was done without a warrant. The defendant challenged all of the evidence that was put in against him from this GPS tracker, saying that the agent should have gotten a valid warrant. Thus, the question came to the high court. Was this one a search under the Fourth Amendment? And if it was a search, was it done in an unreasonable or unconstitutional way? The decisions, in essence, come down 4-1-4. Justice Scalia, writing for the majority, because the one justice, Justice Sotomayor, joined his opinion to make five, thus is the controlling language, in essence, set the Wayback Machine to before 1967. Justice Scalia, who is very literal in his interpretation of the Fourth Amendment, said, look, if we look at the things that are explicitly mentioned in the Fourth Amendment, the car, which is a person's effect, is mentioned, is protected by the language of the Fourth Amendment. Thus, the agents trespassed upon the car when they put the GPS tracker on it, and they should have gotten a warrant. So Justice Scalia, as he often does, goes back to the 1790s, analyzes the law of trespass as it existed then, and said, in essence, this is a trespass on the chattels. It violated the uh, suspect's protections under the Fourth Amendment. This is a fascinating position for several reasons. One is it questions law that's been established since 1967 using the so-called CATS test that we judge whether something is a search under the Fourth Amendment by whether it violates someone's reasonable expectation of privacy in the activity. Justice Scalia says, no. First, we look at whether the thing that's being searched is one of the enumerated things in the Fourth Amendment. Here's someone's effect. And that puts it under the protection of the Fourth Amendment, not this vague notion of privacy, which he's always been very, host very hostile to because the word privacy is not in the Constitution. So now we have a two-track approach. First, you use this trespass test to decide if something is within the Fourth Amendment. And then second, and only second, you would then use the CATS test. It's also fascinating in that Justice Scalia is becoming the dominant voice in the Fourth Amendment. From an, early case in, an earlier case in the 1990s, uh, Kylo involving the use of a thermal imaging device on a house, to a car search case several terms ago, Gantt, to this case, Jones, Justice Scalia's voice is becoming the controlling voice on the court. Another interesting aspect of the decision is it doesn't wrestle with modern technology. Many commentators have said the court took this case to, to decide things like what's a reasonable expectation of privacy in view of all the technology that we have. GPS trackers, especially technology that we all carry in our pockets. Modern phones, and there are now 322 million cell phones in the United States, there are more cell phones than people, allow the government to track us either through GPS technology that the phone has or from the cell tower data that the phone relays. Many people thought the court was taking this case to have an opportunity to speak to that question. The majority opinion does not. So it will be interesting to see how it evolves. I think what will happen is the, with this two-test approach, we'll actually have more protections under the Fourth Amendment. They'll have the trespass test, voiced by Justice Scalia, and we'll still have the CATS analysis. So indigents will be hidebound now to go and get a warrant before they engage in this electronic tracking. Um, other aspects of the, of the decision are quite interesting in that Justice Scalia has a great concern for the rights of property holders, and much of his opinion expresses that concern about the law of trespass, 
the right to be protected from trespass. So this is another opportunity to watch him engage in that analysis. If we contrast that with Justice Alito, who writes for a concurring opinion, because remember, all nine justices said this was a search and a warrant was required. So the only debates on the court are which test to apply, which test the lower court should apply. And Justice Alito said, no, we should be governed by Katz. Katz is controlling here. And the Katz inquiry, did somebody have a reasonably objective expectation of privacy in his travels, as was relayed for 28 days by the GPS tracker, is a question that we can analyze under Katz. And we shouldn't overturn precedent that's existed since 1967 by encrafting this new trespass test. Uh, this time, uh, Justice Alito seems to have lost the debate because Justice Sotomayor, who also wrote a comparing, uh, concurring opinion, voted with Justice Scalia to make five. Justice Sotomayor, and many people were watching her because she's a former prosecutor, she's new on the court, she hasn't had the time to develop a rich body of opinions on the Fourth, on the fourth Amendment, wrote to, in essence, say, we can have both. We can have the trespass test, and we can have the CATS test. So as we go forward, I'm going to be uh, arrogant enough to make several predictions. One, state Supreme Courts, and in interpreting their own state constitutions, will come into this area, and I think they will aggressively embrace the CATS test, because under their state constitutions, they can give more protection to an activity. They can't give less. So some state uh, high courts will break lockstep and say Oregon or New Jersey uses the CATS test when it comes to this electronic tracking and actually gives greater protection to privacy. Another activity is that legislators are going to come into this area. Justice Alito, in his opinion, alludes to the fact that statutory uh, law can provide protections for privacy, and he specifically alludes to the Wiretap Act, which in the 1960s, there was great concern, was wiretapping a prohibited activity un under the Constitution. Congress cut that Gordian knot by passing the Wiretap Act. It's a very rigorous protection. It's easy for the agents to follow. And Justice Scalia, in essence, is inviting legislators in to pass the equivalent of the Wiretap Act for GPS tracking. And third, I think what will come to be is we will have this two track analysis. So lower courts, when they're faced with a question, is something a search under the Fourth Amendment, will ask themselves, one, is it one of the enumerated protections under the Fourth Amendment? And if so, would it have constituted a trespass at common law as it existed in the 1790s? And two, if it's not that, does it fall under the CATS test? In essence, did it violate someone's reasonable expectation of privacy?